Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and collectibles. I'm going to sit you down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and buy your treasures off you with a cash offer on the table today. £600, Ken. I could do with a bit more than that. I'm sure you could. <laughs> if I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to encourage you to gamble and place the same goods into an auction in the hope that we will get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Cleethorpes. There's a wonderful crowd of people here. They want to do business, sit down with our dealers, either sell for cash or go to auction, but they want to walk away with the real deal. People of Cleethorpes have raided their homes and have arrived with arms full of bags and boxes. And our first seller has unearthed a fascinating piece, surrounded in mystery. What will Tim make of it? Hello, Kay. Hello, pleased to meet you. And you? Now, you've brought an Indian medal along today. I have, yes. Can you tell me a little bit about how you acquired it? I don't know a lot about it, to be quite honest, Tim. Um, my father died in 1982 and there were coins and things and that, and they were all in a bag. So, is it a, a, a family piece then? Did you have anybody in your family out in India at that sort of Not time? Not as far as I know. Not as far as you know. No. Was he a collector then, your dad? Did he sort of collect he coins? Coll he collected all different bits and bats. Not a collector as in collecting. Yeah. It, as I called it, he collected junk. <laughs> Well, it isn't junk, is it? Well, no, obviously no, not. No, no, it's not junk. Mm. Well, these these bars here, these are what battles they've been involved in, you see. So they add yeah. them onto the, the ribbon. So we've got Tarar, 1897 to 1898, and then the Punjab frontier, which is the same date. That's right, yeah. Punjab. Yeah. So we've got these two... Indian soldiers. So obviously this is sort of like the time of the Raj and there were all sorts yeah. of like uprisings and what have you because um, of what was going on there. And then we've got Queen Victoria here on the back. So let's just have a look and we'll just have a look around it and it says our quail, the Derby Regiment. Does that ring a bell to you Kay? Is that a family name or anything? I've never heard that name before. You've never heard of it. But, you know, it's going quite way back into... It is. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, 110 yeah. years ago, isn't no, it? I'm yeah. not that old. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> wouldn't say that on TV. Um, right. £50. No, thank you. You've got great expectations. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> what about £100? I think you'd be very good at poker. You're not giving out away, are you? No, I don't, Tim. <laughs> Never do. Come on, more, more. Well, I'm changing colours. Are you? Yeah, I am. No, thank you. Well, help me out, Cal. David. White Kay, let's talk about this medal. Hello. 150 to 200 pounds is what the independents are saying and the auctioneer concurs. Medals at the moment in the sale room, fashionable, they're doing well. The offer on the table, realistic, but one would expect it to do better. I'm, I don't think you need my help. I think you're astute enough <laughs> to do this yourself. Thank you. Right. 140 pounds. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. What if I just took these away, right? Okay. And give you this one, pretty colour. Go on then, you've got a deal. I've got a deal. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, will Karen toss in some cash for little gems? Right, a couple of salad service here. Family bits? Yeah, I, we've worked out they were probably my grandfather's. Yeah. Um, he died in 65 and they were passed to my father. Mm -hmm. um, my mother and father have both since passed away, so they've come down to me. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know a lot about them, apart from the fact that my mum and dad used them all the time. They were in and do you know what metal they are? Have you They're silver. They're Solid silver. silver. So you know yeah. I've looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, right. Let's have a little look on the hallmark here. Okay. We got the anchor and the lion percent and a date letter for about 1910. Ten, yeah. Um, and we've got Bully of Glasgow as the retailers. So right. we've got Scottish retailers, interestingly. My grandfather was Scottish. Ah, ties in then, doesn't it? <laughs> So, Alison, why why do you think now's the time to sort of sell them? I've never used them. Yeah, they're just sitting in the drawer, they are they? Just, they just sit in the loft and get passed down again, but never used. Yeah, OK, fair enough. So, um, I think I think we've got about four ounces um, there. I had a quick way before I sat down, so... I'm going to put some money on the table. Right. 20, 40... Fifty pounds. No. 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 Why not? It's the worth more than that. Yep, they are. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Can't deny it. <laughs> That's what I'm planning on. Um, look, hang on a minute. I'll take the ten away. That's my bid because there's a bit left for me. Yeah. I know there's a little margin in there, yeah. and it's a fair offer. I think it's fair. Yeah. You yeah. happy? Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Alison. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Karen pitched it just right. Will our next dealer, Agnes, be silver-tongued as she tries to buy this royal platter? Hello, Jennifer. I'm Agnes. Oh, hello. This is a very interesting object that you've brought today. Um, a commemorative piece. What can you tell me about it? Well, very little. My husband bought it in 1981, and that's all I know. It's We kept it out for a little while, but for the last few years it's been in the cupboard. Right. Well, let's just have a quick little look at it. It's got the hallmarks on the back, and on the front we've got the crown with Charles and Diana and a whole load of coats of arms around here. And it's quite important to this piece that it's come with its original certificate and inside it explains what all these coats of arms are about. While there are collectors of royal memorabilia, the silver price has gone up to such a degree that it might be difficult to find a collector who wants to pay more for it than actually what the silver's worth. So, from a dealing point of view, because it's a nice object, I would like to sell it to a collector. That's my difficulty in what to offer you. Let me see what we can do. Um, 20, 80, 100, 120, 140 pounds. No. no, given I'm trying to resell it as an item, okay. I'll put you another £20, making £160, Jennifer. Jennifer, I've just come in here now because we're probably getting to a crucial stage. £160 is a cash offer. I've looked at the independent values estimation and the auctioneer. 150 to 220 What I can tell you with a lot of this royal memorabilia, because it's issued in such a large quantities, they are not very valuable. The best deal really should be done here in the dealer's den. There is no commission to be deducted. Look across at our dealer and say, please, may I have some more like Oliver Twist, but allow at all times a profit for our dealer. Please, may I have a little bit more? What if I might put another 10 and make 170. Would that seem like a fair price to you? No, 180. I'll put another 10 pounds. Yes. Have we got a deal now? We have got a deal. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up. Have you had it going? Does it go? It was until last night. Well, when I last overwhelmed night. it. <laughs> oh dear. Will this last minute adjustment cost him dearly? Find out after the break. 
Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Cleethorpes. Now, do you fancy donkey rides, golden sand or a good deal? Well, that's what Carl and his son Steve are hoping for. Over to you, David. Hi, I'm David, you're... Carl, Hi, to Carl, pleased to meet you. Steve. Hi, Steve. And you brought along here um, a greyhound, a whippet? I believe it's a greyhound. Yes. I'm not entirely sure. Tell me something about it. Is it something you've had a long time? Uh, about 18 months. Uh, I bought it in a box full of other items. Um, quite liked it. Decided to put it up in the dining room at home and uh, the wife didn't like it. So the same day it went into a cupboard. Oh, shame. Uh, very, very nice, I must say. Sat there since. What do you think to it, Steve? It's not my type of thing, if I'm honest. It's you nice, young kids, nice. eh? Don't like good things. <laughs> no, quality items. Well, I can tell you what this is. This is... Um, a copy of a bronze. This is made of spelter metal and it's French and it was probably made about 100 years ago, 1890, 1900 or thereabouts. And it's probably been fastened to maybe another marble base. Um, these holes here, I think, have been... You haven't made these holes, have you? No, no. When I got it, it was attached to a quite a horrible piece of wood. Was it? A, yeah. Quite a modern piece of wood. Yeah. Was. Well, I can see that these have been drilled through later. Um, it's a shame. I suppose it could be filled. And uh, well, we've got a signature here of uh, a French artist, du Duvalier, is it? Anyway, there it is, and it's very nice. It's a pity it's not bronze. I mean, bronze, it would be um, probably a couple of thousand quid. Wow. Carl Sully. <laughs> but Spelter is a different story. It is a, a copy of the original. Right. So uh, I'll get some dosh out, shall I, and yeah, uh, see yeah. if we can uh, buy it off you. Good what do you think, idea. Steve? Good well, I need all this. Hopefully. <laughs> 40 pounds. No. 60 pounds. No. Steve's smiling. No. Yeah. Who's going to make the decision here? You, it's Carl, me. or I, Steve? I've a, I've a, I'm coming up for 40 and it's towards my 40th birthday party. Well, Carl, I'll say 80 pounds and I think that's where I want to be. Oh, here's some advice. Right. Wait, 80 pounds is on the table. Spell to figure, 100 to 150 is the estimation from the auctioneer and independent valuers. I'd have no hesitation in saying 150 pounds if those holes were not drilled in the base. And I think that's what's worrying David Hakeney. So, 80 quid is a good starting offer, but I think if that goes to auction, even with the drill marks, it will make within the one to 150, in my opinion. That's a good advice for a man that knows what he's talking about. Can Come we on. squeeze you for a bit more? Well, you're great guys, you two. I'm going to say 90 pounds and that would be me finished. What do you think? Yeah, well, I'll leave the decision to you. If you Steve, think it's good enough, what do you we'll think? take it. Your mum will be happy. Um, so you see, see the back of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that is good, good offer, yeah. It's a fair bit deal on that, yeah. Carl, I hope you, you enjoy your 40th birthday Thank party. You. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Next, a vintage timepiece. But Dave and auctioneer Colin Young have moved in because all is not what it seems. Right, before I get stuck into this, you tell me a little bit about it. Uh, I just bought it from a friend of mine a few years ago. Yeah and uh, he was emigrating to New Zealand. So he was just trying to take as much money as possible with him. And did he give you any history of the clock? Did he tell you anything about it? Not particularly, just when it was made. And what did he say? Uh, 1756. Well, at first glances, we've got a really handsome bracket clock. Um, we've got the lovely make of uh, William Thompson of Chester. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a single fusée. I just open the back up on three bells, which you can see mm -hmm. at the back here. And again, we've got the engraved name on the back. Mm -hmm. Everything's really good so far. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> what do you think about the case? Uh, you did tell me about that. The case and the movement aren't the same. It's not original to... No. Now, that's um, a big shame yeah. because this is almost, I don't know, what, 30, 40 years, possibly? I don't know. Yeah, within, within the last 30 or 40 years. Have you had it going? Does it go? Uh, it's, it was until last night. What when happened I last night? It. <laughs> oh dear, okay. 
Colin. George II would be the appearance. As it came through the door, I thought, oh boy, what have we got here? The look of the clock from a distance, Georgian, early bracket clock, but on close inspection, there are lots and lots of problems. Huge amount of restoration, yeah. but the movement looks, to my eyes, reasonably sound. Now, what do you think about it? Well, it immediately didn't have the wow factor for me when I first saw the case because um, you can see all the inserts that's been put in the wall and the way that it's been taken back, there's no patina. In fact, it doesn't look great at all. No. Um, but the wow factor does come in the moment you see the movement. And once that's put into a better case, that's going to be a very smart clock. Karen, our dealer, is shrewd, clever, I think she'll go for this, but what's she going to put on the table? Um, so, have you got a figure in your head? Hmm. Uh, right. One, two, three, four, five. One hundred. One, two, three, four, five. Two hundred. I'm going to put 250 down, Steve. Mm -hmm. Now, David, what do you think of my offer? Did you see the way <laughs> she was trying to wheedle out of him? <laughs> how much do you, you know, how much do you want for it? Okay. okay. <laughs> You've heard what Karen has said, and she's right. What we have here is a highly speculative item. There is a basis of movement of quality which can be recycled by a clock restorer if you have the right case, as Karen pointed out. Mm -hmm. Four to six hundred pounds is what the independent valuers are saying. I'm saying to you, that sounds realistic. If you had a decent case with a later movement, this would be right up your street and you'd pay good money for it in auction. No. Take it, you're not very impressed with my 250. Not 250. No. no. I'm not going much more, Steve, because I haven't actually got confidence in it. So I'm going to put 270. You're not going to take that, are you? Uh, no, it's a little too low. Yeah, we'll have a great yeah. day in auction. Thank you, Karen. And, uh, yeah, have fun on the day. So how will this combo of Georgian movement in a modern case fare in the auction? Now, Stephen, you brought along a George III bracket clock, um, single fuse E movement, signed William Thompson of Chester. Now, you sat down with Karen Dalmany, she thought there was a lot of work to be done with this, and so she offered you £270. What did you think of that offer? I thought it was a little low. Well, I Slightly agree. low. I think that's very low. I think it's worth more than that. The reserve is £400. It's worth £400. Is it going to make it? Who's going to start me at £400? Three to go then, surely. £300, two. £200, be it at £200, £220 now, make it at £220, £240, £260 now, £260, £280 or not now, at £260, any more now, at £260, thank you, £280. They're struggling here in the sale room, it's £280, £300, the internet's coming in. £320 now, £320, £340, £360. At 360. It's 360 on the internet. It's creeping up now. It's getting near, tantalising near to the reserve. At 380. Any more bids now? At 380. Are we all done? At 380. All done? I'm afraid at 380 I have to withdraw the lot if those parties that are interested do come and have a word with us afterwards. Thank you. A little bit disappointing. It crept up little by this and it got up to £380. It didn't quite make that reserve of £400 and it didn't sell. Are you disappointed? No. No, it's okay. Take it home with a smile, tick tock, and hope for a better day. Just didn't make it on the day. Next time for a brew. Thought Agnes might go thirsty as this little pot is definitely tea for one. And this is what you've brought to show us today. Yes. What can you tell me about it? Well, it was me nana's, um, and it's been in the family previously as well. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just been passed down. Now, it's, it's beautiful, and it's reluctant to bring it today, but my little boys want a playhouse. So oh. the money that I'd be funding from this would be for the playhouse for my children. Oh, I see, right. Did your granny ever use it? No, not to my recollection. 
And did you ever play Aladdin with it? Cause yeah, I've rubbed it a few times. You've rubbed it a few yes. times, yes. Sadly, I see that a few other people have rubbed it with something a few times as yes. well. Yes. Unfortunately, it's got these rather detracting pit marks, I suppose we'd call them on the side. Yes. Well, it's a late piece of pewter and it yes. would be an early piece of silver. Yeah. Because the period of pewter really was before most people could afford silver. Right. And when these were new, it would have had a shine like silver. Yes. It's oxidation with the air that's made it have this oh, right. colour now. It's got the mark here for James Dixon and Son, which are a firm which went on to make silver plates. Right. And it's a very nice thing. Having said that it's a nice thing, pewter, say 30 years ago, was actually a lot more saleable than it is today. Yes. It's a market which is really off the boil. Yeah. Um, so we'll say £10, £20. Bear in mind that it is, it is a rare, a rare teapot. Well, there would have been quite a number made, but yeah. there's probably not many surviving. No. Because pewter's a soft metal and it yes. does tend to get bashed and dented. That's correct. And then people threw them in the bin. Yes. Well, shall we say £30 then? I was looking for not a lot more, but that... more than £30. Right. Oh, here's David. Hi, David. Um. What you've got, Trevor, here, I'm sure your dealer has told you, late 18th century, a bachelor teapot, 30 to £50 pounds is the estimation by our independent value and by our auctioneer. Will it bring more than 50 in the sale room? I'm not so sure. Somewhere around about maybe 50, maybe 60. Yeah. Then there's a commission to be taken off. Yes. So you are close, but it's still a little bit low. Thank you very much. Oh, dear. Well, that's told me, hasn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Well, I'll put another £10 down then. You know, in auction, it might only make the 40 and then you've got your commission off. It's a real gamble going to auction with that. Yes, you've met me in the middle and that's, that's a deal, I think. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. Very good. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it along. Thank you very much. Coming up... Karen gets straight to the point. And how much did you pay at auction in the charity auction? Go on. Go on, you no, can tell me. I really didn't. Yeah, I know, so I know. can Karen guess how much our seller wants to pocket? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Our dealers have been busy buying. I'm David. Hi. You are Steve. So Hi, will Steve. David be paying out for these German vases bought on home soil? You've brought in a pair of vases here. Tell me yep. something about them. Uh, I'll do a bit of car booting, like, and I got a bit of car boot sale. Did you? How long ago? A long time ago? About six, seven months ago. Oh, not too long ago then, yeah. No. And uh, why do you want to sell them? Well, I basically bought them to sell to hopefully to make if I can make a bit, make of, a bit of profit on them. them. Right. Yeah. Well, I can tell you something about these vases, not an awful lot. These are German and they're probably about 100 years old, 1900-ish. They're about, sort of around about there, 1910 maybe. And they're very much like a company called Metlac, but uh, I'm not quite sure whether they are Metlac or not. I quite can't quite decipher this mark underneath. But they're a stone, stoneware, salt glaze. Nice, aren't they? They're lovely, aren't they? There's about them, isn't there? Hmm. Shame about the little chip. It could be restored. It's not too serious, but... Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> well, let me see if I can tempt you. 40 quid, Steve, does that tempt you? I'll have a bit more. I just wish you hadn't got this little chip in it. It's not it's too hard about. to get done, but it's just two months away waiting to get them back. 60 quid is about where I'd want to be for these, I think. Um, this stoneware stuff I find very, very lovely quality, but I don't find it the best of sellers for me. What do you think? I'll take six quid. So yeah, we've had a deal there. That's six fine, thank you. Thank you very much for bringing them in and uh, tell me how much you gave at the car boot for them. Seventy pounds from both. Did you? Yep. Well, I thought you might have had a little touch. I thought you might give 20, 30 quid for them. No, I wish. Oh. <laughs> 
small loss, but cash for Steve's next car boot. Next, a blazer off the back of a legendary English footballer. Right, now I can see we've got a men's blazer, yeah. but there must be a story. Well, I got it at an auction, a charity auction. Yeah. And I like Man United, it's Brian Robson's. Brian Robson? Yeah. Oh, I see. Very important name. Yep. How long ago? About 15 years. So you've had it 15 yeah. years. And do we know when the great Brian Robson had this jacket? Do we know anything about that? When he first played for England. Yeah. So when would that have been? Um, early 80s, was that? Yeah. OK. Early well, even 80s. I know Brian Robson. Yep. And I'm not a huge footy fan, but he was a brilliant player, yep. wasn't he? Captain of England? Captain of England, yeah. yeah. Great thing, and I, I, I'm assuming that the three lions here, that, that's the England yeah. club, so this is an England blazer then? Yes. Of about that time. Right, we've pretty much gone through all the history. So why have you brought it along today? Well, it's just stuck in the wardrobe, Yeah. basically, and I thought I'd just bring it to see how much it's worth, basically. And how much did you pay at auction in the charity auction? Well, Go on, you no, can tell me. I nearly did then. Yeah, I know. I you know. know this on the tip of your tongue, wasn't it? It was. Right, I'm going to stick, Tom, as a hundred quid, and it's going in Brian's pocket here. Um, but I'm telling you, and I hope David will say the same, nice bit for auction. Was it Brian Robson's coat? Yes. Of course, it was a young chap, I should think, when he, he wore this. Very nice. Three lines on the buttons. Bought a charity auction. Sure, I couldn't let it out a bit. <laughs> OK, 100 to 150 is what they're saying. You know, it depends on the day what it's going to do at the auction, but I have a feeling with the name attached to it, I think it could do well at the auction, so that's the place to go with it. I think we're pretty much agreed, Tom, yep. aren't we? Yep. We'll have a fantastic day in auction. Right. I hope it does that's really well for yep. you. Come on, then. How much was it? Two hundred. 200, so no wonder you won't take my wanna. <laughs> Don't blame you. <laughs> so all are agreed, auction is the best place for the best return. Will the footy fans be out in force? Coming up now is the jacket, reputed to have been worn by Brian Robson. It has a £100 reserve on it. Is it going to make its money? Let's find out. Lot number 120. An England football blazer worn by Captain Brian Robson, manufactured by Dax of London. Start with £100 for it, 100 80 to go, 50 order then, 50 straight in, 50 pound bid at 50 bit, 5 now to a C, 55 bid, 60 and 5, 65, 70, 75, bid 80, 85, 85 bid, straight again, 85 bid, 85 bid, 90, that's more like it, 90 bid, 95, back on the attack at 95, 100 now to a C. 95. At 95 bid, 100 and up, then going this time, then 100, 100 pounds bid, at 100 any more, then selling, make no mistake, at 100 pounds. Okay, the gavel has gone down at 100 quid. In some ways, Tom, I was hoping it didn't make the 100 quid yeah. because we've got commission to take off and I make that about 85 pounds. It's better than sticking in the wardrobe. It's better than sticking in the wardrobe. Are you satisfied? Yeah, yeah, fine. On the day? Yeah. Okay. You live and learn. On the day, Tom bought it, paid good money at a charity auction. He's going home with 85 quid. The real deal was with our dealer, Karen Dalmany, at 100 quid. Good on you, Karen. I bet you were going to wear that, weren't you, Karen? That was the real deal. Now, this unusual heirloom has landed in front of Agnes. And for working on the go before laptops, this was right on. This is rather an interesting item you've brought with us with you today. Can you tell me what you know about it? I don't really know a lot about it, to be honest. Um, it was come from my wife's auntie's house after she died. All right. Um, and all I know, it's, a, it's a tra like a travelling bureau box. Um, I didn't actually realise until last night that it has a secret drawer at the bottom of it. Yes, that's right. Well, we know from looking on the top here that it belonged to the Reverend Fielding Old, so he's got his name nicely on the top of the box. Um, if we just turn it round and open it, we'll see what's inside. There we are. Um, Let's put my specs on to have a proper look. 
Yes, yeah, see, this would originally have had ribbon across here between these markers to keep letters in. Right. But that's all missing now. This would originally have been leather. Um, this is a replacement from a later period. Um, and we can see there's this piece of wood which has broken off the end, so that's going to need to be put back on. Right. There's a few little drawers here inside and it's got its ink wells. Now this one, while it's not original to the piece, it's very interesting because it's a screw top traveling ink well and it opens up and then it seals down securely in transit because as you rightly said at the beginning, this was a traveling thing. Yeah. So that's in there. Oh look, here we've got your little part. Let's investigate that. Now this is a locking pin. Right. And it holds a drawer in the side in place and that will unlock the drawer. And unfortunately there's no hidden treasure. No. Still we can't win them all, can we? No. Right. So there we are. We'll put that back. And we do see all over this box the polish is very tired. Yeah. It's needing a complete overhaul. It's something I would like to buy. Um, let's see what we can do. Um, 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds. More. More? Yeah. Okay. 50. No, a bit more. A bit more. How about that? Still like more. Andy, I've come in at this stage because I think we're at a critical stage. You've got a box here, a rising slide, which looks very, very shabby, but has a lot of potential. It wants a good restoration job. 50 to 80 seems to be what our independent value would say. I think I concur with that. If you could get a little bit more money from our dealer, I would advise you to take it. Because to go to auction, I don't think in this climate you would do any better than 80 quid, maybe a little bit more, but minus the commission. Well, there you have it, the man has spoken. I'll go another 10 for you. Have we a deal at that? Another five. I don't do fives. All right, another 10 then. Well, you are pushing me, but you've got a nice smile on your face while Thank you're you. doing it. So, okay then, there's another 10 and have we got a deal then? We've definitely got a deal. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for bringing it. Still to come. It's very posh, isn't it? Now, do you have your morning coffee in that? Well, now and again. Now and again. <laughs> Tim loves a proper coffee pot, but he won't get this one for a few beans. I've got to buy it. I've got yeah. to buy it. Can Tim hold on? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's been a busy day for our um, dealers. Um, and if Tim is in need of a pick-me-up, then this could serve it with style. Hiya, Ken. Hello, Tim. Nice to meet you. Yeah, pleased to be here, yeah. Now, you've brought a beautiful coffee pot along today. It is. It's quite nice, yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. It's very posh, isn't it? Now, do you have your morning coffee in that? Well, now and again. Now and again, <laughs> hey. When the, the neighbours come I can around. just see you there <laughs> with your hobnobs on a plate with yeah. that. It's yeah. very nice. And yeah. can you tell me about how you acquired it? Well, I, I, I bought it a few years ago, uh, and it had all the Welsh dresser. And yeah. We've minimalised now. So and, you, uh, uh, yeah. And this would have belonged to somebody who was very welfare. It would have been, yeah. you know, Joe Public wouldn't have had something like this. It would have been maybe a merchant, even an aristocrat or something like that. Oh. Yeah. And we look underneath. This is the hallmark here. Yeah. And it's William the Fourth, And the date letter is 1836. Now, William the Fourth didn't reign for very long. No. By 1837, Queen Victoria was sitting on the throne. That, so that's right, yeah. yeah. He, he was a short reign, and you do get people who particularly just collect William IV silver. Yeah. So it's sort of adding to its value. And this here, these little bits here, this is ivory. Oh, yeah. So that when you grab the handle, 
you don't burn it. It's, yeah. a, a, it's an insulator because obviously the silver heat comes out. Yeah, of that's it. right. Yeah. So, well, I tell you what, I'm going to make you an offer. Mm -hmm. It's based on the weight because I know what it weighs. Twenty nine and a half ounces it weighs. Yeah. So, are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fifty. A hundred. 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600 pounds can. No messing around. Mm. Yeah. Hello, David. <laughs> I've come in here because an interesting scenario here. We have a very nice late Regency coffee pot, William IV a good saleable item. There is £649 worth of scrap. Oh. Tim's put 600 quid on the table, but let me say this, the independent value and the auctioneer, they are saying six to eight, because they're saying this item is worth more than scrap. It is desirable, it is usable, and it would be a crying shame to put that into the melting pot. So, yeah. I'll leave you with Tim, see if he can tempt you a bit more. But that's what it's worth in scrap, 650. Thank you, David. Now back to Tim. He's Five trying to buy Ken's silver coffee pot. Pounds, with 600 pounds on the table, but David the came in and said it was worth up. more. But will Tim agree? 650 pounds, Ken. I could do with a bit more than that. I'm sure you could. <laughs> £670. We're getting... Somewhere near, yeah. We're getting near, Ken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chuck another tenner on and we've got a deal. So, £680. Well, I can't let it go for the sake of a tenner. I've got to buy it. I've got yeah. to buy it, so... Because it's so nice, £680. OK. Got a deal. Ideal, Thank Tim. you very much, Ken. Welcome. It's been a pleasure. So, one more thing, Ken, before we part and you take my £680 and I take your coffee pot, what did you pay for it? £270. Hey, <laughs> you're shrewd, aren't you? <laughs> a very handsome profit for Ken. Have our dealers done as well? Agnes got her money back on the commemorative plate, selling it for £180. She eked out a profit selling the writing box for 95 But has yet to find a buyer for the small pewter teapot. And she's not alone. Tim's medal and David's German vases remain unsold. David did rehome the Spelter Greyhound for £110. And Tim sold that fabulous coffee pot for £700. We've had a cracking day here in the sale room. There's been lots of action, lots of buying, lots of bidding. That's the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.